Hey there, Shauna Karish coming to you from Vermont. So it's Ash Shauna Answers on the Road. And I have Bella here with me. Anyway, she's Nikita. Anyway, so um, this question I'm bringing to you today comes from Yvonne, and she says, Hi, Shauna, I have two horses, a gelding in his late 20s, good, wow, and a two-year-old Frisian filly, both of whom, whom I've done positive reinforcement clicker training with. My old boy, bless his heart, is slower and less inventive, but he adores our time spent clicker training, and he takes his cookies out of my hand so gently with soft lips. My filly, on the other hand, is insanely smart, remembers everything, learns new behavior within minutes, is full of energy. she's absolutely the smartest horse I've ever known, and I love the way you can literally see her little brain working. She was an orphan and was an uh, aggressive biter when I got her, a problem I think I'm, I've completely eliminated. Um, there are only two problems I've not been able to resolve. One is that she tries to jump into my lap when she gets scared. Um, she has knocked me to the ground a few times and has stepped on me. She's always a close walker and likes to be touching me while we walk. She seems to see me as her security blanket, but it's dangerous a dangerous situation. I get to give um, I can get to give me a little breathing space when we walk at Liberty in the arena, but as soon as a fear factor takes over, when like we're walking um, somewhere away from the comfort of home, she immediately reverts back to the petrified lap dog mode, crowding me and stepping on my feet. The second problem I can't seem to get past right away um, is her way of taking rewards out of my hand. She will ask so politely for a cookie by turning her head away from me, but the instant my hand starts to open to give her the cookie, um, she attacks my hand. She snatches a treat so hard she knocks my hand down and I can feel her baby teeth grating against my palm. I have tried keeping the treats in a closed fist when she um, when she first goes at it and this makes her just bonk her muzzle against my fist. So she'll back off until I open my hand to take it. The problem is that this only makes her it um, only makes it take it more gently some of the time and the rest of the time as soon as I open my fingers she swoops in for the kill. I've got my fingers bitten twice already. She stops she stopped and waited when I've offered the treat but then I didn't get my fingers all the way open before she pounced. She's a fast little booger. <laughs> I clearly have not found a long-term solution. She's such an amazing little girl and I've enjoyed my um, time clicker training with her more than you could possibly imagine and you can um, give me um, any help you can give me on either of these two issues would be greatly appreciated. God bless, LaVon. Well, th thank you, LaVon. That is really, uh, you know, it's, I love the opportunity to be able to help. And, and again, I'm apologizing on every single one of these videos I'm doing in this little spell because I had technical difficulties with camera, filmed all these while I was on the road, and then the camera, there's no sound. I had to get a new camera. I had to figure it out. Had, you know, so things kind of got in the way. So I apologize for it being kind of a late response. So I don't know where you are now, but I'm going to still offer help, and I'd love to hear where you are. So maybe I can help you through the next phase. And I promise I'm getting to these questions sooner these days. I just had that setback which meant I had to do research and find and buy and all that kind of thing but anyway so for the um, so we have the two things it's the, the let's address first the mouthiness okay so the mouthiness and taking treats the and the horses that take treats roughly and I mean they take them roughly in all different ways and different things can work and different things you know for some horses it, people have said if you give them a little bit it makes it easier for to them to take I find a lot of times for me giving them a little bit makes them grabbier. But sometimes giving other horses a big amount makes them grabbier. But I find if there's more to get, they're a little calmer about it. If it feels like it's just peanuts in there, little tiny ones, I find they tend to get a little more scrambly. Um, and so and so there's different things that can work or not work, so you have to experiment a little bit. But I have a couple suggestions. One, I might, we're going to treat this as a behavior. I want you to click and reinforce good feeds so that she, you can say, yes, that was good and I will give you another right away. And that was good and I'll give you another right away. So I break it down to working on how she takes them. So I would, um, and, and you said you're having some success by keeping your fist closed until, you know, and, and only opening it when she feels gentle. If you're having some success, if any behavior is improving, then you might be on the right track. So you kind of go with it. Give it a little bit more time. And sometimes, like, as I look at everything like scales. 
So that means there's a lot of reinforcement on the side that says grab and dive and take those fingers with you. And there's not enough on the side that says very be gentle and calm. So as we start to get more reinforcement on this side of the scales and the scales start to rebalance in a new direction, pretty soon this will be the new choice because this one has a higher reinforcement value because they just are going to go the thing that is more reinforcing. But for a while you may be where you're getting better but not all the way there yet, you know, so you kind of keep going with that if you can still get success. So that's a thought if that is working with any consistency, and it might not be. It might be that she just scared herself, and then she came back gentle, and she might just get over that and go, that's not so scary, and then continue to do it. So I don't know about that. You'll have to let me know um, where you are with that issue. But another thing that can also help is um, sometimes when they're really grabby and snatchy, um, Sometimes I will actually, I'll bring the food up, and as I start to take it, I also bring it up further. So they kind of have to back off a little bit to accommodate the, um, the, the, to accommodate getting it nicely. So it is a little bit of pressure in there because it's coming up in their face and to eat the food they have to kind of back off. So sometimes by raising your hand off you'll find that they back off a little which makes the pressure and the diving um, be less. So it, it tends to soften them because on the other side of that coin if we are kind of pulling away because we're getting hurt we have a tendency to have them chase it if that makes sense. I went and worked a zebra and she, one time they called and said they, you know, they needed to get some stuff done with her. They had to get her halter off, you know, whatever. But she, um, they said, well, she's, um, she bites if you give her grain, but she's good with carrots. So I said, bring me carrots, you know. That's not rocket surgery. And so they brought me carrots and she wouldn't take the carrots. So I'd say, bring me grain. And so kind of just by watching her and so I kind of seeing how she was with it. And I thought, you know what? I need to not snatch my hand away. And it's intimidating because she's diving at it because people are getting afraid, so it's kind of a catch-22. So I just kept my hand there, and you have to gauge this. I mean, I'm talking a little zebra, but um, so I, I just gauge it. And she bit my thumb muscle, didn't break skin or anything, but I kept my hand there. And as soon as she knew, and she bit it kind of unintentionally, she's just trying to get the food. She's not trying to hurt me. And I kept my hand there and as flat as I could and kept my hand there and she got the food. And then I did it again and she got softer and softer because the food wasn't flying away from her. So sometimes coming up can get them to back up, but if it starts to go away, it can get them to chase it. So those are things I would try to help address that situation. So, so experiment with that a little bit. And if you've had an... And maybe we shift for a little while to use bigger things, bigger cookies, bigger pellets or something that you can try that. Sometimes that makes it worse. Sometimes it makes it better than the smaller pellets. So, and maybe try the bigger handfuls, like I said. Now, another thing you might also want to do is do her after feeding time. So where she's already just eaten a bit and maybe not feeling um, quite so excited about the food. Um, but sometimes, and very quickly, it can get where it's not really about the food anymore. They enjoy the training process, and the food is just kind of part of it, but they can just get excited about the training. So look for calm and, calm and relaxed all the time. But sometimes doing them after they've eaten, they're a little less aggressive about food because they're just, they're just a little bit more settled. So that's another thing to try. And one other thing that you might try is using a less a lower value food. So maybe like you're giving her something that she loves, but there's something that she also really likes, but isn't quite so frantic about. So those are all things to experiment with. You know, it's not like I have a flat answer that is a recipe and go, this fixes it, but these things will definitely help. So try them out, see what's working. Even if you got it resolved, I'd love to hear what worked for you because I get to learn from you guys all the time. So I love that. Okay, now, so that's one issue. The next thing is uh, the walking with you. Okay, now, and it's good that she's got it, it sorted out with doing the right thing, but we need to teach her how to do it in the face of new or fearful objects. So what I would do is I would utilize, I love your, doing the walking and the leading at liberty. That's super. I would continue to do that, and I would do it utilizing the target because the target even maybe get a longer target or extending target where you can keep her even a little bit exaggerated far away from you and make that very reinforcing to stay away from you with those things. So, I mean, you know, when you're walking and leading, and it sounds like you've got that part worked out. So now the new factor I want you to incorporate here, I think that's going to help you, is start introducing objects that might be a little worrisome. Not, we don't want to give over threshold, we want to work below her panic threshold, but enough that she might go, what's that? You know, so she has a little bit of worry, but not the biggest amount of worry. So, um, 
I would work on that and have it, you know, so you place an object strategically that you think will be mildly worrisome but not overly worrisome. And as you're walking towards or approaching that object, use that target to keep her out there. As you're getting closer and she's keeping her, her, her distance, click and reinforce her quite a bit for this. So she gets used to... And then step it up and step it up as she gets good where you can bring new objects and she walks by them and walks by them. And even though they're brand new and weird and, and you can escalate. I have a despooking video that uses all kinds of, it's a video series, it's six videos, all kinds of things that get them desensitized to. And this, I think it's a multi-tiered approach because I think this is going to help her to get better about strange, new, scary objects and give her, make her, help her to have better choices when she comes across those new, strange, scary objects. So that is going to help her on that end, but it's also going to, you're going to physically be teaching her the space, but by, you'll also be working on some of this despooking exercises. So she starts learning new objects are not so scary. New objects are actually good so that she'll start, as she starts to see things, she'll get better and better and better about new objects and not being so worried about them. So, so that in itself, as she gets less fearful, she's going to have less situations where she makes these, you know, wild security blanket diving decisions. So that is what I'd work on with her. So start really slow, use a target to guide her through it, build up to different things, new things. I used something on that video called Giggle Buddies. Eventually, that's scary and down the road. But by systematically introducing new things and teaching her how to behave around the new things, and it'll, one, build up her courage around the new things, teach her what to do with the new things. She's still going to be startled with new things here and there. I mean, you know, they just get startled. But we can teach them to make new choices, what they do with that response. So, and I'm going to tell you a little story here. This question's getting a little long. I look at my little timer. But I'm going to tell you this anyway. <laughs> there was a woman who had, a, she happened to be here in Vermont. It was years and years and years ago. And she had a horse who would, um, every year she'd go out on the trail and the horse would get spooked by things but she loved her horse to pieces so she's not going to get rid of the horse and she loved trail riding so she had broken collarbones wrist ribs you know she'd been all busted up so I, I said okay well you know I recommend her do these little exercises in the barn in the arena places where she felt relatively safe and it was during the winter when you couldn't go out onto the trail so it was kind of the same environment all the time but so I said, change it up, move things, put it different places, different things. And so she did these little simple exercises through the um, winter. And then she went out on the trail with her horse for the first time. So she has her, her waist pack, her bum bag, you know, with treats in it. And she has a clicker on, um, I have stick clicker. She had one attached to a riding stick and she heads out. <laughs> and then she goes out. So it's like the first day of spring. This is everything scary and new. And she said, a partridge flew out of the brush. Now this horse she used to spin and dive and be gone before she had any inkling. Um, she all she did she splayed her four feet because she got startled and she, the, the woman was like that is so much better so she clicked and reinforced her for that better decision and so she was reinforcing her and then the other partridge flew out of the brush and all she did was look at it and then look back at her rider for, to get reinforcement so while you can't prepare for partridge flying out of a brush what we can prepare them for is that impulse control and teaching them what to do with that impulse so you're going to be teaching a multi-tier you're going to be working on how she deals with new things or teaching her about new things that they're not scary but also in addition to that you're using the target to help create the space and helping to eliminate what that choice is so you're saying I know you want to make a choice but let's make this choice so that will help her out quite a bit anyway so, LaVon, I hope that helps you out. If you have questions, let me know how you're doing, where you are with your progress, and please don't hesitate to get a hold of me at AskShawn.com. I'll be getting quicker back to you this next time. And uh, that's it for now. Anyway, till next time, enjoy getting your horse, horses, on target. Bye.